Alrighty, where have I been? That's the big question. It is episode number six of West Coast Wednesday. We're going to talk a little bit of news and info and also discuss briefly of what went down in the Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach. As I said in the previous episode, I will be going to the IndyCar race at that part of the time that I did the last episode, which was quite a while back, like seeing about almost a month ago to be exact, or three. Anyways, about Long Beach, as I said, I will be going to cover that Grand Prix. I figured for the West Coast Wednesday, an episode that there's really not much to talk about, I will discuss it briefly. It's safe to say it was the Alexander Rossi show. He eviscerated the field one by over 20 seconds over Joseph Newgarden, the championship leader. It was the largest margin of victory since 1995 when Alistair Jr. beat Scott Pruitt by well over 23 seconds, if I recall correctly. It was a pretty interesting race. There was not much of fuel strategy for a track like Long Beach, and that's been emphasized by the podium finishers, were, which were Rossi, Newgarden, and Scott Dixon. Under controversial circumstances, how Scott Dixon got the podium, which I'll discuss momentarily. There's not, and it's a track where qualifying is essentially everything, and if there's no full course yellows dominating, there's not much you can do. And that's kind of how similar what happened in Baku in Formula 1, where the safety cars, where everybody was expecting safety cars, safety cars. We only got the virtual safety car after Daniel, Daniel Ricciardo had a little bit of a dirt moment going backwards. I think it was before or after, I can't recall. But anyways, it was quite an experience to be at Long Beach covering, taking photos. It's not that easy to do both writing and photography, especially... On race day, when you have when you have a very tight schedule, if I ever get you think you know me back up and running, which if some of you that only watches or some of you that watch every video that I do, for those that does that, I forever appreciate it because you're the loyalists of this, of my channel, of my brand so far. It's not that easy. I think you can safely say the most memorable moments were a few, and there were mostly attrition. Which there was only one retiree, that was Colton Herta, which for the second time in a row, second race in a row, Colton Herta finished dead last. Remember, this is the second straight dead last finish after winning at Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. He hit the wall in turn number nine, which as a phot photographer point of view, it was, a, it was a pretty good spot to take photos. Because they're coming off the corner, they're going sweep to, through n turns nine through 11. It's a really nice spot to take photos, if you ask me. The photo album, the photo gallery, you can find uh, the stuff that I took at Long Beach Saw Motorsports Tribune. Just go find it on their multimedia and then click in pictures and then you'll find it down there. In pictures, 2019 Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach. But there was an interesting wreck in, turn in the opening lap where Jack Harvey actually went through. He ended up in the, in the fountain, the garden stuff in the fountain. Ever, some people have always wondered what if, when, what, what if, and when will it happen where a driver goes wrecks and lands into the fountain, that iconic fountain shot that you see in turns four, if, I, if memory serves right, turns three or four. Can't think in the top of my head right now because there's got, you got a lot to digest, and also this is mostly about K and N stuff. But since I covered a race on the West Coast. I figured I'd talk about it because obviously next week and the week after, there's a lot to discuss because that's when the Tucson race happens. But moral story is, it was Jack Harvey, who was it? Who else were involved? Marcus Erickson was also collected. It was Matthias Lace, who, by the way, Matthias Lace had a tremendous show. He finished 15th and got a good recovery out of it. Jack Harvey had a pit. Spencer Piggott also had a pit. They lost a couple laps. But all of them actually continue on. None of them retired. And for where I was in turn number one, I couldn't really tell if there were how big the wreck was or how it happened. There wasn't really a good replay that showed how it happened. How did Harvey end up in that garden? So, well, it's one of those we'll never know type of stories, if you ask me. Other than that, there were problems with Will Power. There were also problems with Santino Ferrucci. Who all went went off, but all continued. Matthias Lace had a, a Foy, the Foy cars had a rough week with Tony Kanan wrecking and qualifying. Matthias Lace had problems twice, and then also the lap one incident, but he actually recovered fairly nicely. 
all that month of May stuff, it won't be discussed on West Coast Wednesday. At the very most, it might be you think you know me if I get that thing back. It's not canceled. It's just a lot of stuff has went down since I talked about the Kurt Shelmer Dean fiasco where he got removed from the Hall of Fame ballot. There's been a lot of stuff that's been going on that I had no time to do. You think you know me? So based on the numbers, it's not it's not that it's not that great to really soldier off with this one. It's more of a saying I want to continue doing and want to make it something at the end. But other than that, it was a pretty tame race. Then the big controversy with Graham Ray Hall, did he block Scott Dixon? The way it looks like, I don't think he really blocked Scott Dixon. He was defending his move. It wasn't like corner cutting or cut off somebody. Well, Dick, unless you're Dixon, you disagree. But did they got it right? It's one of those where I don't necessarily agree with the decision. It looked like nothing, nothing out of line happened. I've seen worse blocks before. But remember, the 2016 Indianapolis 500, one of the drivers' bid of winning the 500 was ended as a result of a block where he had to serve a penalty. So it's, it's one of those where I don't necessarily agree with. But that, uh, as a photographer, it was a blast. It's the first time I did photography credential to be a photographer, not just solely a writer. So it was a blast. Also, doing the MSO race, doing some photos was was pretty compelling just seeing just seeing the IMSA for the first time albeit it's just only the DPI and the GTLMs not the not LMP2 and GTDs but of course there's a tight street circuit and pit road is as tight as a, as a mofo that's for sure where there's really no room to give and from a photographer point of view I wasn't even able to get Canada so the only thing I was going to get is just some cars that's it which I have no problem with because as long as I get some really good shots for the long haul, so everything's gonna be okay. It was quite a, it was an interesting race. It was more of an attrition fest than it was for the IndyCar race, that's for sure. As far as stadium super trucks, there was no time for me to really focus on the stadium super trucks because, again, as I said, riding is my main priority. But just going to that Grand Prix, be, be much, this is the biggest road street slash road slash street course race on the calendar. It's the second biggest race on the IndyCar calendar next to the Indianapolis 500, of course. So to cover the biggest race of the West Coast, pretty much in all of motorsports, quite a big deal. It's good that be. It's, I'm glad to be able to do it. I was. I'm glad to just witness the, the nice pageantry. A lot of it's a great. It was a great vibe. It was a vibe, that's for sure. But now the focus tonight shifts from IndyCar to NASCAR. Where next week, May 11th, it will be the Port of Tucson 100s. 150s, 100s, 150s. It's the doubleheader, that's for sure. It's the doubleheader in Tucson, Arizona, which I mentioned multiple times a year ago. Cody Vanderwall swept the night in Arizona. Could he do it again? Vanderwall could use it right now because he's not had the best of start this season after what happened at Irwindale last round where he cut a tire and had a poor result that almost puts him just... Barely in the top 10 of the championship trail. And for those wondering why do I call it the championship trail, it's basically going back to IndyCar because back in the early 70s, it used to be called the Marlboro Championship Trail before Viceroy came into the game and pretty much breached what Marlboro told USAC that. He said, no competition. Once the competition kicked in, Marlboro left. Championship trail was over. And then the rest, you can say, is history as far as how open we was percepted. In, in America and just worldwide, uh, 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 go listen. If you follow, if y'all folks listen to Dinner with Racers, I highly recommend you do so. There's a lot of in NASCAR people on that one, not just exclusive to sports cars and Indy cars, but you. But I recommend to listen to the Robin Miller one. But yeah, that's why I just it's just stuck in my. It sounds cool to say Championship Trail. It's just simple. But yeah, he needs to have a strong result. That is for sure, Cody Vanderwall. Another driver that is looking to prove himself, and not just himself, but the team, is Todd Zuza. Uh, a, a couple weeks ago, there was an article that came out that talked about Zuza, how he wants to be super competitive, but he understands that Bill McAnally and Bob Brucati are the top team, but he wants to prove that he can be up within that par of those teams. It's a long stretch, but he had a really good showing in Vegas. Not so, it was relatively quiet at Irwindale, so we'll see how he does at 
We'll, we'll see what he does this season. But he's focused on a full-time campaign. A year ago, he didn't run the whole season. Which would put him just barely into the top 10 battle. But I think he'd definitely be a top 10 points finisher. That is for sure. Big question is where will he end up and how much of an improvement they'll make. So we'll keep an eye on Souza. Souza had his moment infamously at Evergreen where he got taken out in that big collision in turn number one. That was after the long and grinding weight of that rain delay, the thunderstorm delay as well. It was the second red flag of that race, by the way. And it, it was, if I remember, it was not that long after. It was a few, no. There was the red flag for the storm. Then Derek Krause had the problem. And then if I remember, that's when the big wreck happened with he, Takuma Koga, Will Rogers. Speaking of Will Rogers, I still want, I, I, I here's the thing. If you put him in a national tour road course, it was more than likely to be, doesn't matter if it's like a, at most sport, aka Canadian Tire for Trucks or Road America and Xfinity, you put give Rogers a chance. I think he'll be tremendous on a road course. If you if you want, put him on the road bowl. I feel like if he does run the road courses, try to go for that sweep, fight, do it again. Well, she came up short in Watkins Glen in that Canadian East race, in which Brent Moffat won in the Katori car, which is now driven by. Mike McLaughlin's son, Max McLaughlin, number one Toyota, by the way, to be exact. But yes, he's had his he's had his moments. It's just staying out of trouble is that it's that simple when I think of Todd Sears. It just needs to stay out of trouble. When he stays out of trouble and puts a good number, it's gonna stand out. And I think that when you look back at the dirt track of Vegas, that's what he and Joey Tanner are the ones that had really good showings. And Sousa had it throughout the race. He was more notably before the first break happened. Well, it was only the only break, but the break at halfway happened. So we'll see. Here's a, that's one guy I keep an eye at Tucson. I don't think he'll win, but I think he'll be an interesting dark horse to keep an eye on, like I mentioned with Brittany Samora at Irwindale. And with Samora backed it up. Speaking of McAnally... It's going to be an interesting weekend, a compelling weekend for Derek Krause, who not only will be running the Canner Outdoors Truck Series race at Dover this Friday, but the next day after Dover, he'll be running south, the, the dual races at South Boston, which that's their, that's their equivalent of Tucson when it comes to double headers. Not just he, but Haley Deegan, who can sorely need a, tremend, a, a tremendous and better result in in the can and East calendar because Bristol was a weekend to forget, as I mentioned in the last episode. That is for sure a weekend to forget. So for Kraus, it's more or less can he get that championship lead back from Sam Mayer, who eviscerated a competition leading every single lap at Bristol. And for Deegan, it's just bounce back from a horrendous weekend at at the at, you know the last great Coliseum. So South Boston will be the next two races for the can and East Tour of which Krause and Deegan will compete. For the Gander Outdoors Truck Series, this is Krause's second start of the year. His first one was in March, but with modest result, modest success. Speaking of k and East, let's take a look at the championship standings. This is after the first two races from New Smyrna and Bristol. So Sam Mayer has a three-point lead over Derek Krause, Brandon McReynolds in third, who didn't have a great result at the ARCA race at Talladega like I would have expected to. He's six points behind Colin Garrett. Fourth, Spencer Davis rounds out the top five. And when you look, Tanner Gray is tied in ninth with Mason Diaz. Max McLaughlin in 11th. Brady Sabora is 13th. Haley Deegan 15th in the championship standings. What Deegan has that she is ahead of Ty Gibbs. It's just a little fun, an unnecessary fact for you, but... Let's go run down what I'll be discussing next week. I'll be doing my preview for the Tucson race. You'll see the new intro. And then the week after, I will discuss both races. So it might be late, it may not be. Well, I'll, I'll still try to figure out how am I going to execute those two races. I think I'll discuss both of them. If not, I'll split race number one for one week. And then the week after, race number two. We'll see. But that's what you expect. So the next episode will be focusing on Tucson and only Tucson. Discuss the entry list. And then after Tucson, we'll discuss both events accordingly. But for now, that's all I got for you on West Coast Wednesday. I just wanted to get a 
episode out for you. Get that monkey on my back when I was said I was going to discuss about Long Beach. But there you go. So for now, until we meet again, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you listen to the other previous episodes of West Coast Wednesday where I talk about the races at Las Vegas and Irwindale. And keep an eye on that hype video because it will be coming out in the next few days. For now, I'll catch you guys later.